Hi everyone, just a very quick video on the lathe project, the lathe refurb. Um, I've hit a, quite a bit of a milestone here. Um, to, as you can see, it's uh, all painted up, it's all been, all the rust's gone, all that surface rust that was all over it, it is all gone now and uh, stripped down and put back together again. And uh, I think it's looking okay for. Uh, an old lathe. Um, I've also managed to, I've just finished mounting the motor and I've just been running some tests there so if I'll just take you around the other side, there we go there's the motor. Um, this motor didn't actually have to buy one, I had it lying around I actually had two of them, um, I was planning on using uh, these two motors to replace the existing ones on my my homemade Segway, but uh, decided not to bother doing that. So I've had these motors for about a year just sitting in the shelf and I'd forgotten I had them um, because I was planning on using one of these uh, spare motors here that I had uh, for the Segway, but there was a little bit of a mounting problem. I couldn't really find an easy way to mount it securely. It's quite heavy as well. Um, and this is actually the output shaft there. And of course, this is the original motor I got with the lace, the an AC motor. So that one's really no use. Doesn't give it doesn't give me any variable speed drive on it. So, like I said, I've got uh, these nice little compact uh, DC motors here, which is just just right for the job actually. Um, very easy to fit. I just had to drill and tap four holes on the side of the lathe there, and I've mounted them on standoffs to allow me to adjust the, 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 the belt tension. Um, a couple of belts that I bought off of eBay that are fixed length so I just had to uh, do what I could in terms of mounting the motor to uh, get it get the tension right. Of course I'm not going to be able to change the belt, uh, I'm not going to be able to adjust the ratios just because of the way I've uh, mounted the motor. The motor's actually quite right on the end of the lathe here, on the lathe bed there and it kind of just kind of uh, force me into using uh, one particular um, uh, ratio on the motor uh, against one up on the lathe itself but that's not a problem it's almost one to one so that's fine because that's what I was planning on uh, the, due to the the RPM the maximum RPM in the motor so as you can see there that's it's nice and compact there so I do actually have it up and running so I'll just plug it in here and uh, I've got my motor control board here, uh, 25 amp control board and down the back there I've got a 16 amp 24 volt power supply with, which I think is going to be fit for the job. Um, so I've just uh, got a pot here on the motor so we'll just uh, turn it up and get it running. And I don't know if you can hear that but it's actually quite quiet. You don't really hear much of the motor at all, the noise, noise that you are hearing it's basically the, the shaft inside there. If I just turn it down again. And one thing you will notice, I've got a little counterweight uh, they have a little lead weight that I've attached to the the gear here because it was actually I've had actually had to shim the shaft um, due, due to a mismatch in the diameter of the hole against the shaft and the actual motor itself. So I've done that best I can, uh, but it did you know it was slightly out of balance. So I ran the motor on the workbench at a uh, high speed and uh, added a weight until it was uh, a nice and smooth run in there so that's what that is there but it shouldn't cause any problems so let's get, let her go, get her going again of course it will go in both directions there that's the normal direction and I can't actually run the motor in the reverse direction although why I would want to do that I don't know uh, the other um, thing that I've added. I've actually, I've actually, have actually fitted the plastic gears here that allow this shaft here, worm gear here or whatever you want to call it, to turn and it means that I can engage that lever there and as you can see, I don't know if you can see that but this bed here is actually moving along and that's uh, for cutting threads on round bar there, it's actually moving I can actually speed it up a bit, it should go a bit faster. You can actually see the handle turning as well. So go in the other direction. I can't 
disengage it again. So, there it is, it's up and running. Uh, just um, waiting on a drip tray coming. I'm um, getting that uh, cut to a specific speed, a specific size. And the reason for that is, I'll show you right now. I do actually have a stand for it. As you can see, I've uh, mounted it in the workshop already onto the through the in the other part of the workshop and that's it here and the lathe is probably about here right down to about here so it's nicely sized for the the lathe and I'm just like I said I'm waiting on a, a drip tray coming that'll just fit nicely on there and then I can mount the lathe on it and then uh, what I do plan on doing is mounting uh, the power supply and the speed controller probably up in here somewhere or against that side cover there uh, nicely out of the way and probably with a, a hole through for the, the 240 volt uh, power cord there. So that'll do nicely. So there you go, that's it up and running. Um, the next you should see in the next video is with it all finally installed on its stand with the drip tray etc. And uh, with a bit of luck I'll be doing a little bit of turning as well.